Hi, and welcome to another edition of Sartorial Talks. Today we're going to speak about something that's near and dear to my heart, and that is finding the tools that will allow you to express your own style. And this is a first today for me because I've not to yet, I'm not yet looked directly into the camera. So uh, I'll see how it goes, but it's a new experience. So let me know if it works better for you. Oh, uh, when we talk about expressing our own style, first of all, whatever you do, make sure it has meaning and make sure it somehow creates emotion, even if that emotion's just being created within your own self. And uh, I'll give you a few examples. And I think this is probably the strongest example I can think about. And this is in terms of tools that you can actually put into action, concrete things that you can do. The first thing is to wear items from time to time that are passed down either from a family member or a friend. Uh, I, we know a, a few examples of this. One is a person that we work with with a fab fabric company from time to time. His name is Mike Parenti. We met him in New York City once and he had on this amazing vintage overcoat. And of course, the first thing we ask is, where did you get this overcoat? And so he tells the story of how his father had it in his closet and he just discovered it. I don't know, a few weeks before he actually started wearing it, if I, if I remember correctly. Another um, example is in one of our comment sections for Harris Tweed, the documentary. We had uh, a man who also discovered from his father that his father owned a Harris Tweed jacket and he began wearing it. So when you do things like this, it makes a statement. For example, we remember Mike specifically for his coat, if we don't remember anything else that he wore. And um, I think this is something, if you can just look and see if something like that exists. These two people didn't even know this item of clothing existed until they dug a little deeper and communicated with some people that meant something to them. So the next thing that you can think about doing is you can give someone a gift so they can express their own style. Of course, you can't ask for a gift. That would be a little strange. But in my case, I actually gifted Hugo with uh, two different tie pens. And so when he wears these tie pens, it, it stirs emotion and it holds meaning. And he actually carried it quite the distance on one of the tie pens that I got him. It was uh, actually a hand-painted tie pen. And I'm gonna look at my notes. It's from um, Zenia Norkina. She's a Russian girl and she paints these masterpieces on these small little tie pens. It doesn't even seem possible. But I commissioned this from her and she sent it. And uh, Hugo wore that, I think, for a year and a half straight, almost all the time. Um, I also bought him a tie pen, I think, from Tokyo um, uh, when we visited. And that's something that when he wears, we reflect on that time um, together in Tokyo. Okay, now let's move to something even a little more deeper, and that is you can wear an heirloom. We talked about wearing clothes passed down, but what about heirlooms? And how would you incorporate that into your wardrobe? In the case of Hugo and myself, we lost our fathers um, within the last six months, and we got together as families, and of course we had this moment where we looked at the items that meant something to us that belonged to our fathers. In Hugo's case, he was um, passed down his father's ring, and I'm actually wearing the ring today. I don't know if it's evident where, but I'll show you. Um, for my scarf, I've used the ring to secure it. So I rolled the scarf from the from dividing it diagonally, starting from the point and rolling it to a straight line, put it around my neck, and then slipped the ring into the corners of the scarf and just pulled it up. And so I'm actually wearing an heirloom that may not be so evident, but that means a lot to me and also means a lot to Hugo as well. Um, the next thing is uh, for heirloom, of course, you know the pocket watch. That's a pretty evident heirloom that would be joy to wear and something that sticks in the memory of others and tells a story. Um, I'll, I have from my father his um, tie bar and I'll talk about that a little bit later but I keep it with me almost all the time um, and I'm not wearing a tie today so you can't see it but I still have it with me and I'll talk about that a little bit later. 
Um, cufflinks, another one that a lot of uh, people that we have seen from time to time will say, this is my grandfather's cufflinks or my father's cufflinks. It's another thing, maybe just look for um, if someone meaningful to you passes and uh, just to see if there's maybe something there that can help you tell the story, express your style, hold emotion and meaning. The next thing is, uh, it's kind of a... Um, difficult to describe, but it's a way to pay. You can do something that can pay tribute to somebody else. For example, what I told you earlier about securing my scarf with with a ring is something that Dandy Wellington, who can also be found on YouTube, taught me. And um, that was something that I do. And when I do it, I think of him. Another thing that's that I'm doing right now is I'm putting my necklace on top of my scarf. Now, this is a very specific tribute to someone who's very well known and as a famous tailor who we lost a few years ago, and that's Renato Chiari. For years, when we would see Renato Chiari, almost every time he had a actually beaded necklace on top of his necktie. And It took me a few times to realize this is a consistent thing that he did. And so every time that I can pull it off, I'll try to wear a necklace or some kind of simple um, uh, necklace around my neck that would go over a scarf or go over the necktie. And it's a nice way to, to just commemorate Renato Cacciari. I'm trying to think if there's... oh. Another one, Lorenzo Cifanelli. Hello, Lorenzo in Paris. Something you go and I do sometimes is we pay a tribute to Lorenzo by doing um, something I used to call like a, a clash talent. And what Lorenzo did is he took the very same color and he started mixing the same color, different tones, things, tones you would never imagine being put together. Like you would have a shock blue pants and a navy blue jacket, and it looked wonderful. And so you and I probably aren't that bold, but just recently um, we put together a little competition where he tried to wear all green, I tried to wear all blue, of course in different shades, and it came out quite well. I think he won because he actually found a green shirt to go with his green outfit. And uh, so I think he, he trumped him on that one. But anyway, that was a fun competition and something that we do from time to time when we're trying to express a style and commemorate Lorenzo. Another thing that's sort of odd that maybe you haven't thought about is you can look at imperfections as a way to express your style. I think in the past we already talked about how, uh, I hate to overuse this term, but how old money people would let their collars on their shirts fray and get a little bit, you know, some threads um, becoming bare and wear that as a point of expressing the fact that they treasure these shirts. In fact, it was so uh, anathema for some of these people in this class or way of life to wear a brand new shirt that sometimes they would have their someone who works for them wear their shirts for them just to make them look a little bit worn. Okay, that's carrying it far. But the point is, um, if you have something like tears, even moth holes that can be mended, if you get in the habit of mending these things, you actually can recall memories of when you've worn this item. It's a longevity item that other people will notice that you're taking care of your clothes. And probably the best example I can think of is the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles. He's known to keep a bag full of scrap material um, from most all of his suits to use as something, um, as a repair element anytime he damages his suits. And so that's something that he's known for. That's something that's part integral to his own style. So don't think of imperfections as a bad thing, especially during this time when everyone's trying to be environmentally aware and um, people are trying to think about sustainable fashion, we should say sustainable style in in our realm. Um, So this is a good way to both support the environment, make your own statement, be a person who cares for his or her things. Finally, we're going to talk about something that I really like, and this is finding your signature in your wardrobe, something that probably you only do. 
maybe a few other people, but mainly you. And I'll share something that, that I've done that I'm trying to make my signature. And it has to do with something I talked to you about earlier. And that is my father's tie bar. So I happen to wear my father's tie bar on my cuff of my shirt. So especially if I'm not wearing a tie, I keep it with me here. It's not so obvious, but if I raise my hand up, someone may ask me about it. I have it with me. I know it's there. It's meaningful. It creates emotion to me. And usually if I share the story, I find it's often meaningful and creates emotion with other people as well. So think about that. What can you do that's different? If you want to consider other people, maybe you can add in the comments other people who have their signature. Of course, we have um, Mr. Agnelli, who most of you probably already know, had the cuffs on his shirt cut so he could wear his watch or timepiece on top of his uh, cuff. Okay, that's carrying something, yeah, really far, and it's unique, but it's something you remember him by. What else? Okay, we have um, Pierre Todou, who I think, I think he died in the year 2000, and he always wore a boutonniere. Okay, that's not so progressive, right? But if you wear a, fra a fresh boutonniere on your lapel every day, it, this is just the consistency in itself, and the repetition is going to be a style element and something that's a signature for you. So it doesn't have to be something totally unique. It can also be something you do consistently. And I think a story with a, a Pierre Trudeau, I think when he died, they picked someone out of the crowd who took a rose and laid it on his coffin just because he was recognized for always wearing a rose on his lapel. Um, let's see. Think. Oh, James Sherwood. You probably know James Sherwood. He has written a couple of books about Savile Row, Henry Poole. Um, he does something that I wonder if you already know. I wonder if you know what it is. And it's this thing he does consistently. What he does is wear a tie pin on his necktie, I guess, every time I've seen him wear a tie. And he kind of scrunches up his tie, makes it a little bit unusually draped, and puts that tie pin into the tie. And a lot of people are freaked out. They think they're gonna, that he's going to hurt his tie, but he's not worried about that. He does it consistently. It's a style element. It's a strong signature. Another example of what can be done to create a signature in your wardrobe. I'm trying to think of, oh, last one, and then we'll wrap it up. The last signature that's really strong in my mind is Tom Wolfe. You remember what Tom Wolfe did? He actually wore a white suit all four seasons of every year. And, you know, I think he had a navy blue blazer that he threw in the mix from time to time. But almost every time you saw this man, I think he wrote um, Bonfire of the Vanities, uh, a very famous writer, he would wear be wearing a white suit. Now, that really upset some people at first because there was this rule, you never wear white after Labor Day. Well, he just threw that out the window. And this is a thing you can do. You can break rules. Break a rule. I mean, don't look ridiculous when you do it, but break a rule and create your signature. So he told this story about why he did that. He said when he started becoming sort of well-known from his writing, that people would want to interview him, you know, just because for publicity or just to have a story. And he found out he was really terrible at interviews. So if you have trouble speaking in public, don't feel bad. Even Tom Wolf was had a, a lot of difficulty with interviews. And he said that when people would write up the interview, they would say, this is a really cool guy. He was wearing a white suit. So he felt like it was sort of a compensation for what he was lacking at the time. So that whatever the reason, that adds meaning to what he's doing. So. These are the examples I can think of. I would love to hear from you. Are there other ways that maybe you could recommend for other people to create their own style? If so, leave it in the comments section. And for now, cheers and see you next time on Tutorial Talks.